also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world,
these are your announcements for today. Stepping into a season with God, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Psalm 51 verses 10. You're invited. Please join us each Sunday for Sunday school between 9 a.m. and 9.45 a.m. Seven face-to-face -face Sunday school classes are available. Sunday School Bible Basics presented by Minister Harry Patterson on Thursday, September 28th, 2023 at 7 o'clock p.m. Facebook, YouTube, and St. John Baptist Church website. Don't miss this informative presentation and more. Celebrating historically B colleges and universities in South Carolina on October 29th, 2023. The 2023 Fall Revival. Higher Praise, Psalms 34 and 1 at 7 o'clock p.m. nightly at the Mount Moriah Baptist Church on 801 Broad Street, Camden, South Carolina. It's time for revival. Mark your calendars between October 2nd through 4th at 7 p.m. nightly. We will have Reverend Alfonso Houston from the New Foundation Missionary Baptist Church on Monday night, October 2nd. On Tuesday night, October 3rd, it will be Reverend Zach Somerville from the Mount Prospect Baptist Church. On Wednesday night, on October 4th, they will have a Reverend Tony Humbert from the New Fortsville Baptist Church. The Sunday School Virtual Christmas Program. Old Little Town of Bethlehem. If you would like for your child to participate in the Sunday School Christmas Program, please sign them up immediately after church service today in the foyer. The rehearsal dates are December 2nd and December 9th. The skit will be videotaped on Sunday, December 10th, immediately after church service. Thank you from the Sunday School Christmas Committee. Save the date, St. John Couples Retreat on November 18th, 2023, in Columbia, South Carolina. Embracing the journey of continually becoming one, Mark 10, 69. Congratulations to Caitlin Counts and Eric Hawkins Jr. who were awarded a scholarship from the United Baptist Deacons of Greater Columbia. Happy anniversary to Deacon David and Deaconess Francis Hughes they celebrated 59 years on September 22nd. Love Myra, Steve Foster, Jada and Joy, Fern, Melron, Kelly, and Miles and Morgan. Boykin, Epps, Gis, Jackson, FMU. We offer many thanks to each family ministry unit member who served as greeters for the month of September. It is such a blessing to know that we can rely on your good stewardship. We are requesting all the children and grandchildren of the Boykin, Epps, Gis, Jackson, FMU members and greeters to meet briefly after service in the vestibule seating area near the large windows. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Graham and my St. John Church family. I am so very grateful for the love and kindness shown to our family during the loss of my dear godmother, Sister Bessie Johnson. My church family is the best. I pray God's continual blessings upon each of you. You are greatly appreciated. My sister Gloria Weston. Happy birthday to the four score members for the month of September. Mary Smith Hart, Francis Hughes, Helen Solomon, Nathaniel Samuel Sr., David Hughes Jr., Elizabeth Rogers, Paul Richardson, Mac Evans, Leon Corley, and Carolyn M. Horn. Best wishes to all those to all those who are celebrating a birthday in this month. The weekly Bible verse. Comfort for the youth. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say and the way you live in your love, your faith, and your purity. 1 Timothy, verse 4 through 12. Remember St. John to visit our website at www.stjohnbaptistchurch1900.com and Facebook for additional announcements. Thank you and have a blessed day. St. John. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Brother Hadid for the morning's announcement. 
Glory be to God. This is our fourth Sunday in September. This is Youth Sunday. Let's give it up for our youth who will be blessing us today. We're happy and delighted to have a dynamic preacher in the house. Uh, he's coming from the Red Hill Baptist Church, uh, the little master Jordan Gibbs, a 13-year-old preacher, and he's going to bring down the house today. Amen? Amen. We praise God for and we're looking for a great time in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us stand at this time. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king above all the earth. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. As we come forth today, Sister uh, Little Jasmine uh, Graham is going to come with our welcome. Miss Caitlin Counts is going to come with our opening prayer, and the choir is going to lift us in song in that order. Let's praise him. Good morning, St. John, members and visiting friends. I am Jasmine Graham, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to St. John to, on its Youth Sunday. You are welcome to sing, shout, clap your hands and worship God in any way that your heart desires. Like my dad or Pastor Graham says, our doors are hung on welcome hinges. Friends, you're welcome once, you're welcome twice, you're welcome three times in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Morning, St. John. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing everybody out here today to hear this word. We thank you that we have arrived safely and we pray that everybody will go back safely. Dear Lord, we pray that this message will bless somebody who is in this congregation and that it will help somebody to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's give it up. Let's give it up one more time for our youth. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to know that giving is a part of worship. You can give at any time during the service. Our media ministry will give uh, directions. You'll see it on the screen. We want to thank you so much. Give as given unto the Lord. Amen. We praise God. Our choir is coming at this time.
You may be seated. Good morning. Jordan Gibbs is native to Columbia, South Carolina, and, and is the son of Michael and Davida Gibbs. Jordan is the grandson of David and Martha Hopkins of Columbia, South Carolina, and late Deacon Williams and Joan Gibbs of Charleston, South Carolina. Jordan is an anointed servant of God and has been a faithful worshiper since he could walk and talk. Jordan accepted Christ at the tender age of eight years old. On February 26, 2023, Jordan was a licensed preacher and preached his initial sermon at Red Hill Baptist Church in Gadsden, South Carolina, where Reverend Donnie C. Chambers is the pastor. Jordan is a devoted drummer for the youth ministry and an usher at Red Hill Baptist Church. He is 13 years old and an eighth grade great eighth grader at E.L. Wright Middle School in Columbia, South Carolina. Jordan is enrolled in the Leadership Academy at Wright Law Magnet Program, where his coursework consists of high school honors classes. He also proves himself to be a leader in the classroom, completing previous school years with an A average for the whole school year. He's been recognized by Richland School District 2 for his outstanding Rube Goldenberg project, his drumming and his technical assistance. He has also received the President's Educational Award for Academic Excellence for Outstanding Student. Jordan's favorite saying is, God gave you the gift of 46,000 seconds today. <laughs> Have you used it to say thank you? And, this, and his favorite verse is Proverbs chapter three, verse five and six. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not into thine own understanding and always acknowledge him and he shall direct his path.
the Lord a hand clap of praise today. For we are in his house today. Come on, let's stand to our feet and give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. The Lord gave you 86,400 seconds a day. Have you used one to say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for a new day. Thank you for a new life. Hallelujah, somebody. Come on, clap your hands all over the building. You lead the way, Lord. I right, tell me what to say. Hey. I bring you greetings from Red Hill Baptist Church in Gadsden, South Carolina, where Pastor Donnie C. Chambers is the pastor. I'd like to take a few moments to recognize my parents, if they'll please stand, my grandparents, my uncle. Amen. Thank you. Amen, amen. I just have a song resting on my spirit today. Trouble in my way, I have to cry sometimes, oh so much trouble, I have to cry sometimes, I lay awake at night, but that's alright. Cause I know Jesus I know Jesus I know my Jesus After a while Trouble in my way I have to cross sometimes Oh no I have to cross sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But, cause I know Jesus. Jesus will fix it. I know Jesus. trouble I had to cross sometimes oh so much trouble I have to cross sometimes I lay awake at night I lay awake at night anyone ever had some sleeping problems with tears rolling down your eyes I lay awake at night Oh, but that's alright Cause I know Jesus I know my Jesus Oh, 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 oh My Jesus will fix it just wait on him. Oh, Jesus will fix it. If you know he will fix it. Just raise your hand. Because I know Jesus. I know my Jesus. I know my Jesus. After a while, after a while, come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise, amen, after a while, Jesus will fix it, he will fix it, amen, every situation, every problem, he will fix it, amen, amen, amen. 
Father God, I come right now to say thank you. Thank you for giving us me the victory and the strength. Lord, I ask that you will let me decrease and let you increase inside of me to deliver the word into your people. Father God, I ask all these in the mighty, mightiest, lustless, powerful, mighty name of Jesus. The church says amen. Have you ever noticed how much of life seems to be about waiting? Waiting for job offers, waiting for that new Xbox or PlayStation, waiting for test results, waiting for answers to our prayers. Do you want the strength to keep going, even when it seems impossible? Today we will dive into the powerful message laid out in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the 28th through 31st verse. Amen, amen. If you would rest upon your feet for the reading of God's holy word. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, the, 20, the 28th through 31st verse. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, and neither is weary? There is no searching for his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them he have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall early fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary, and they shall run and not faint. Amen. You may be seated. The writer Isaiah is talking to the people of Jerusalem. The passage describes the strength and the power of God. The, pa the verses suggest that God is able to carry us and sustain us through the hardest of challenges. The passage also reminds us that those who trust in God will get the strength renewed, and those who wait upon the Lord will receive fresh strength. The overall message of this one, of this, of this scripture is one of encouragement and reassurance, reminding us that God is always present and ready to help us with our situation. I want to share this on the idea with you, they that wait. Some may ask the question, why does this scripture matter and how does it relate to me? This scripture matters to the youth because it reminds us that God, we have the power through Jesus. In the passage, it tells us that even the youth shall faint and, and the young men shall utterly fall. See, when we ever we wait and falling short and running out of energy, I say just wait. When you feel like you won't pass the next test or exam, just wait. When you feel like you can't make that next deadline, just wait. We may feel weak and not in under control of our situation. God told me to tell you today that he is trying to work miracles in your life. Just wait. These scriptures matter to everyone because it's the encouragement in the times of difficulty. This passage reminds us that God is in the source of our strength and comfort and that those who wait on him will find renewal and hope. When we are feeling weary or discouraged, this passage can be a, search, a search source of encouragement and comfort. These scriptures are called to persevere. The image of eagle soaring is a powerful reminder of the strength and resilience that can come from waiting on the Lord. This can be a call to go through difficult times knowing that the Lord will renew our strength and help us to endure. These scriptures matter to the world because it reminds us of God's authority and control on our situation. God's ability to bring a sense of hope and peace in a world that often seems so uncertain, unstable, and always changing. The passage, the passage also reminds everyone that we can turn to God. As the songwriter put it, we can hold to God's unchanging hand. He will not leave you nor forsake you, just hold to God's unchanging hand hand. What does the word wait mean and how does it relate to the Bible? The dictionary definition of the word wait means to be inactive or in a state of response as until waiting for something expected happens. 
All too often, we relate waiting with not taking charge of our situation or wasting time. Biblically, the word wait means to hope, to anticipate, to trust. Trust in who? Trust in God. We wait on God, which brings me to my subtopic, trusting in God's timing. Let's break this passage down. Listen to the first part of it. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of this earth, fainteth not and neither is weary? In this part, we are told who God is. God is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. We are also told that he never faints or becomes weary. Next to the, look at these next two verses. There are no searching for his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them who have no might, he increaseth strength. As people, we cannot understand in full how powerful and how mighty God is. We cannot understand his mind or his choices, but we can have to trust in him, for he knows the plans that he has for us. He will direct our paths. Isaiah goes further and says that he giveth power to the faint, and to them he have no might, he increaseth strength. Whenever we are tired and feel like we can't go on, he told us that, Isaiah told us that God will give us the power and increase our strength. Now we're getting to the good part. Next, Isaiah told the people of Jerusalem, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men should early fall. Isaiah told us here that the young and old people will get tired and exhausted. Isaiah stresses that it is okay to be tired as God will fill us back up. Isaiah then writes, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Those first three words, they that wait. They that wait. The people who wait on the Lord will receive more strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In this verse, Isaiah told us that we will receive wings as eagles. He didn't mean this literally, but figuratively. We won't be an eagle, but we have the power of an eagle. The strongest fowl on the face of the earth. We will be able to run and see on what the end is going to look like. How many of us know that waiting on God requires to have the faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 tells us that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence for things not seen. When we wait on God, we are placing our faith and trust in him. We may not see the outcome yet, but we know that God is working a miracle behind the scenes. This means that we have to believe in him and his ability to fulfill his promises. We demonstrate our faith by choosing to trust in God and his timing even when it's difficult. And when we are waiting, we should not become discouraged or because we must trust that we will see the progress or results right away. But he sees the bigger picture, and he knows what's best for us. We must have the faith that he will fulfill his promises in his own way on his own time and timeline. Now I have covered wait, what waiting and how waiting requires faith. That poses the question, who should wait? The Bible is full of stories of waiting, from Abraham waiting for them waiting for a son, to Joseph waiting in prison, from, to the Israelites waiting for them deliverance from Egypt. Waiting is a common theme throughout the Bible. We can learn a lot from these stories about what it means to wait on the Lord. To answer the first question, who should wait? The people who want renewed strength, they wait. You know the days that you don't feel like getting out of bed. And, and, or you're sick, you don't have the energy to do separate tasks. 
when you don't have the, the strength to move on, just wait. Tell your neighbor, just wait. In Isaiah 40, 29, he giveth power to the faint. And to them, he has no might. He increaseth that strength. When you call on him, just wait, and he will return your call. By a show of hands, how many of us are impatient? <laughs> Have you ever wondered why waiting is, is so hard to do? It is so hard to wait because of the uncertainty of waiting. We don't know for how long, which can create anxiety, and it's hard to maintain that faith and trust when you are unsure if your prayers were answered. Another reason why is it so hard to wait is because it's our human nature. As humans, we are wired to want immediate results and immediate response. We, waiting can be uncomfortable and frustrating for all of us, especially when we feel like we've done everything in our power to change or encourage an outcome. My third reason why is impatient because of our lack of control. When we are waiting on God, we often feel like we're not in control of the situation. But matter of fact, that is the truth. You are not in control of your own situation. God is. I want to stress that to you today. You are not in control of your situation. God is. My final reason, why, with, my final reason is with doubt and disappointment. If we have been waiting on God for a long time without seeing any results, it can be easy to doubt whether God is listening to us or if he cares. When Satan is all around trying to take your faith from God and try to take your trust out of him and bring you into his territory, he tries to make you want to sin. Just wait. Now, why should we wait? One, one of the most significant reasons why we need to trust in God's timing today, it allows us to let go of the control. Anyone ever heard the phrase, let go and let God? When we try to control everything in our lives, we become, often become anxious, frustrated, Trusting in God's timing means that we have the faith that everything will work out as it should, even if it doesn't happen on our own timeline. Trusting in God's timing means that we're also acknowledging that we do not know what is best for us. We may think that we have everything figured out, but we don't. We don't know what's going to head on the future. We can't predict the future. God, on the, on the other hand, knows everything about us, including our past, our present, and our future. He has a plan for each one of us. Trusting in his timing means that we have the faith that his plan will work out for the good. Furthermore, trusting in God's timing allows us to develop patience, which is, a va which is valuable. Patience is not only important for our spiritual growth, but for our personal growth. We, we are, when we are waiting on God's timing, we develop the ability to remain calm in a situation. No matter how many setbacks and steps we had to take back and those challenges that we may face, Trusting in God's timing helps us avoid making impulsive decisions. When we are in a hurry to get things done, we often make rash decisions that's not in our best interest. By trusting in God's timing, we allow our space to think through it and make wise choices. However, wait, trusting on God's timing does not mean that we can do nothing. We still have a responsibility on us. Just call him up through prayer and tell him what you want. You might be up in the midnight hour. Just pray and allow him to take care of your situation. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. 
all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what needless pain we carry. Oh, what pain. Oh, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Can I tell you about that man from Galilee? He healed the sick and he loved me. He is the Jehovah Jireh, the my provider. He is the Jehovah Nisi, the Jehovah Rapha, the Jehovah Shalom, the Jehovah Ra, the Jehovah Sadiskanu, Jehovah Sham Shama, my provider, my healer, my redeemer, my mind regulator. He's my trade situation turner. He turned my life around and he placed my feet on solid ground because Jesus is the solid rock, the solid rock I stand. Oh, Savior, Creator, and my Redeemer, Almighty, oh, the only begotten Son, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha and Omega, the Teacher, Emmanuel, Lawyer in the courtroom. He's my doctor in the sick room, the living word, the Messiah, the I am, I am. The, uh, the Lion of Judah, Waymaker, my strong tower. I got to say, leave you one today, but I say this to you, they that wait. Amen. Yes, yes, they that wait upon the Lord. Let's give it up for Jordan Gibbs one more time. Praise God for this young preacher. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Told us what waiting is all about. Sometimes we can be too impatient, and we want to keep control but he's the one who is in control. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us continue to wait on the Lord. Whatever you're going through, wait on him. Trust in him. Never doubt him. He'll surely bring you out. There may be someone in the ark of safety. Maybe someone who don't know how to wait on the Lord. I want to ask that you would stand at this time. Perhaps you've been waiting long enough. You've been waiting and you heard this message this morning. And this is a message for you, that you may come forth. Give your heart, your soul, your mind to the Lord. Do it now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Hallelujah. The door of the church is open. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Will there be one? Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Amen. Will there be another today? We'd love to join the St. John Baptist Church, be a part of the family of God, the household of faith, the church of God. Our dear mother has come. Join the St. John Baptist Church. Hallelujah. Will there be another? Will there be another? Hallelujah. He says, Behold, I stand at your heart's door and I'm knocking. If any man will hear my voice, open the door. I'll come in, have supper with him. He with me, I with thee. Will there be another today? Oh, yes. Perhaps you want to be baptized. You want to accept him, receive him as your Lord and Savior. Will you come? Will you come? He oh is yes, he is will. Yes, he will. He is will. Will you come today? He is will. You step out one of St. John, will step out with you. Will you come today? Will you come today? He will. We're going to ask all of our youth to come down. All of our youth. Those of you who desire prayer, will you come that we might pray the prayer of faith together? Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? All those who desire prayer, 
going to ask our youth to come on this youth Sunday. Glory be to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Join hands and hearts as we go to God in prayer. We praise God again for this mighty word. They that wait. Perhaps you've been waiting on something from the Lord, and this is the time that he's going to work it out for you. Father God, we come once again in the mighty name of thy son, Jesus. God, we thank you right now for Jordan Gibbs right now. We thank you for the mighty word that you placed in his heart you've allowed him to deliver to this people, oh God. Lord, we ask that you would continue to anoint him, continue to develop him, continue to grow him, continue to, dear God, mature him in the faith. We ask God that you would continue to replenish his energy, his power, his anointing. Lord, let your word continue to flow through him, oh God. So we ask that you would bless Jordan in a mighty way, oh God. Father, we pray not only for Jordan, oh God, but we pray for our youth in this service right now, God. We thank you for those who participated, those on the choir, those who've led our service. We thank you for those, dear God, who are in the pews, those, dear God, who come to this altar to be prayed for. So we ask you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would touch our children in a mighty way right now, God. We ask that you would anoint them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Father, we know there's power in your blood. We know there's healing deliverance in your blood. Father God, as we touch right now, let your blood cover Lord, we ask that you, your anointing will flow, that your kingdom will come, that your will be done, O oh God. Father God, that your favor will flow in their lives, O oh God. Father, we thank you right now that as we touch, O oh God, that you're anointing them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We thank you, dear God, that as we touch right now, that you're blessing them with the blessings they stand in need of, O oh God. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for what you're doing in their lives, O oh God. And so we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, that whatever they're going through, whatever their needs are, we ask that you would supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, whatever struggles they're going through, help them to wait on you, O oh God. Whatever problems that they're facing, help them to wait on you, dear God. Lord, whatever obstacles that are in their way, we know, God, that you are able to allow them to overcome that obstacle. And so, God, we ask in your name that you would save our sons and daughters. Save these, our children, O oh God. Give them a mind to trust you, to lean on you, to walk with you, to stand by you. To, and Lord, as you guide them and direct them, O oh God. So bless our children in a mighty way. Not only, dear God, that we ask for your blessings upon our children, but we ask your blessings upon our, our parents, our family right now. Touch that mother, that father that's leading that child right now. Lord, give them a mind to do the right thing. A mind, dear God, to be a good example for their children. A mind, dear God, to trust you, God, even in the midst of not even able to trace you, God. So we just ask that you would bless our parents, bless our children, walk with them, stand by them, guide them, and direct them. God, you know their longings, you know their desires, you know their cravings, you know what they need, oh God. You know their longings for you, oh God. And Lord, you said in your word, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So bless our youth in a mighty way. Bless our youth advisors. Bless our choir members. Have your way in their lives, oh God. Then, Father, we pray for those who are sick right now. Let your blood cover from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. We know there's power in your blood. We know there's healing in your blood. Let your blood cover and cast out the affliction that's plaguing their bodies, oh God. Father, they've been waiting a long time for that healing. They've been waiting a long time for that deliverance. And so we ask that your blood would cover and cast out that affliction that's plaguing their bodies, oh God. We know that you were wounded for their transgression. You were bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of their peace was upon you. And by your stripes, they are healed. We decree and declare that healing right now, God. 
Father, we pray for those who are burdened down, those who are in the valley of despair. Give them joy that will flow like a river, joy unspeakable and full of glory, knowing that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, touch those who are in a financial bind. Open that door to that new job, that new promotion, that new opportunity. Shut the door of poverty, disappointment, and discouragement. We know you can open doors that no man can shut. You can shut doors that no man can open. And God, we just want to tell you, thank you. We pray, oh God, for every family in this place. We pray for that husband, that wife, that son, that daughter. Bring the family back together in sacred stability. Then, God, we pray for the St. John Baptist Church. Revive our souls, renew our strength, restore our joy. Bless each member name by name and one by one. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Father, we pray to God for that, our dear mother who's come to join the St. John Baptist Church. And we pray for the Jeter family. We thank you, dear God, for allowing her to come. We ask that you would have your way in her life. Bless them with the blessings they stand in need of. Then, God, we pray for leaders of our nations. Give them a mind to make right decisions that we might lead a quiet and a peaceful life. We ask these and other blessings. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. We count it done. We claim the victory. And the people of God said amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. We're going to let you go. Amen. Sister Eloise Williams has come to join us. Amen. She comes from Purvis Chapel AME Church, and we thank God for her joining us today. Amen. Let's give it up for Sister Eloise. Glory be to God. And let's give it up one more time for Minister Jordan Gibbs, blessing our hearts this morning. Amen. What a word, what a word, what a word. Wait, they that wait. Amen. What a word. A few announcements. All children, children grandchildren, greeters, and members of the Boykin, Epps, Gis, Jackson Family Ministry Unit, please meet briefly after service in the vestibule by the window. So we're going to ask that you would please do that for us. All children, grandchildren, greeters, and members of the Boykin, Epps, Gis, Jackson Family Ministry Unit, please meet again briefly after service in the vestibule near the big windows in the vestibule. Amen? want to uh, say that yours truly will be preaching on tomorrow night at the Cain, uh, Mount Moriah Baptist Church in Camden, South Carolina, we encourage you to please come along with us at 7 o'clock. Amen. We are having Wednesday night Bible study in person. We encourage you to please come and share with us as we have our Bible study. I want to say again congratulations to uh, Deacon David and Sister Frances Hughes. If any of them are here, let's give it up for them. 59 years of marital bliss. Amen, amen. Sister Cheslin Jackson, is she here? I'm going to ask her to stand. She is featured in the Carolina Panorama as Richland One's Classified Employee of the Year. Let's give it up for Cheslin. Amen. And Deacon Leon Corley, please stand. Okay, well, he's the newest member of the Four Score Club. He turned 80 years old. Let's give it up for him. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, Journey Lin Lennon and Sister Brenda Hollins is going to come to recognize our guest. Good morning, St. John. 
On behalf of Pastor Graham and the St. John family, we would like to welcome our honored guest at this time. Our honored guests are Kathleen McFadden of Columbia. Would you please stand? <laughs> Jeffrey A. Shivia, a Shivia of Columbia. And he, he is a guest of Pastor Jordan Gibbs. And he learned about St. John through Pastor Donnie Chambers. Please continue to stand, please. Um, Martha Hopkins of Columbia, and she is a guest of Jordan Gibbs. And she also learned of St. John through Pastor Donnie Chambers. <laughs> Michael and Devia Gibbs. They are the guests of Jordan Gibbs, and they learned about St. John through Donnie, Pastor Donnie Chambers also. If there are any other others that did not have the opportunity to sign a visitor's card, please stand at this time. Pastor Graham, these are our honored guests. Thank you so much, Sister Brenda Hollins and Sister Journey Lennon. Amen. Let's give it up for them. And to our guests, thank you so much for coming. You, should, you could have chosen any other church to come to, but you chose St. John to come to worship this morning. We want to thank you so much for coming. We pray that the word has uh, been received by you and that you've certainly been blessed by our worship experience. Amen. For those of you who are not members of St. John, our hospitality ministry will greet you at the door. And if you desire to be a member at this time, uh, they will take you in and uh, we will make sure that you are uh, properly taken in. Amen. Amen. want to uh, remind us that HBCU Sunday is uh, the fifth Sunday in October. So we want to ask us to prepare ourselves for HBCU Sunday. Amen. Amen want to, uh, at this time, uh, Reverend Cheatham is going to come with our offertory prayer. Good morning, St. John. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful that you have blessed us to be able to give back to you. Lord, we thank you because you said if we just cast our bread upon the water, it will return to us in a few days. Lord, we thank you because we know and we trust in your word, in the word of God, because we know also that we can't beat God's giving. So Lord, we give to you knowing that you give us over and you give us over and over and over again. And we can't help but thank you for a great God like that, who watches over us, Thank you, Lord. who protects us, who gives seed to the sower. And Lord, we sow back into this great ministry here at St. John Baptist Church. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless these funds, bless this church that sits on this hill, telling men and women, boys and girls, that there is reality in serving a true and a living God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. As we remain standing, how many know that God is a prayer answering God? That he's a healer? Glory be to God. Reverend Margaret Rutledge is uh, going through cancer treatment and she's being healed even as we speak. Deacon Milton Gary Kempson has a kidney transplant and he is at home recovering at this time. Let's praise God. Glory be to God. 
And all those on our prayer list, God is working it out even as we speak. Let's give it up one more time for our youth choir, youth ministry. Jordan Gibbs, let's give it up one more time. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Health. Healing. Wholeness. Prosperity. Success. Long life with satisfaction and salvation until we meet again. We all say amen. 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 And amen. Let's give it up. Sing, sing with our choir. We're ready to go. Come and encourage the preacher. <laughs> 